The Skeleton Horde in. Goal oriented action planning AI, a tutorial. <laughs> hey everybody, I had a lot of fun making this tutorial, and I thought I'd show off this 100 Skeleton Horde since I never made it into it. Anyways, if you guys enjoy, please consider subscribing. Now, back to the real intro. Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about how we can automate characters in your game. Uh, you might have a lot of reasons to automate your characters. You might have some NPCs or some workers or builders or enemy units going on patrol and doing complex things. And in a previous video, I showed you how to make a simple combat AI using finite state machines, uh, link above. Um, and that's really good at doing a lot of these things. But eventually that might get really complex. And you, if you have a lot of actions or a lot of possible actions, that state machine can get really messy really quick. So. Today, I'm going to talk about how to utilize what's called goal-oriented action planning, or GOAP, or GOAP. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, um, AI. And in that system, you're attempting to establish the most efficient sequence of actions that you can take to accomplish a goal. And it's a really fun way to build a lot of interesting behavior in your game that you can scale pretty well um, as the world state or your map is changing, as different resources are made available or not available. If you have a worker that wants to go and build a fire, uh, maybe he needs to make sure that there's wood available or he needs a torch or um, whatever. And that's like a good implementation for this type of thing, uh, especially when the world state is constantly changing. And uh, in my instance for this game i've decided to use it to generate a skeleton horde uh there's gonna be a whole bunch of skeletons and their only two goals are to multiply and to get more powerful and i also can inject a action for them to go and swarm and attack a boss uh, so with that said let's go ahead and jump on in into the game so we can take a look at what we're going to be working with today I've already uploaded a draft of the game uh, on my itch uh, site here, and this will give you a little bit of an indicator of what we're doing. And today I'm implementing this inside of Construct 3, which is a great browser-based 2D video game engine, but these principles will largely be applicable to almost any game engine. So stick with me and we'll go through the basics of GOAP. In this implementation, just so that you can visualize what we're doing, I've put the status and the state of our characters here and what they're trying to accomplish uh, as text around the character or the skeleton. At the top is the goal. So that was generate power and then it just switched to multiply. And underneath it is a state because you'll see that we still need a state machine. It's just simpler to manage. And then on the right hand side along the, the side here is the sequence of actions that that unit is going to take. So this guy is getting the bones. Now he has to go and get the tool, which is all the way up here in the toolbox. And then he's going to bury the bones over here in this little graveyard here. And then he's going to summon a skeleton. And when he does that, he'll have accomplished his goal of multiplying. And in which case, he can get a new goal and start all over again. So this is kind of what we're going to be building today. With that said, let's jump over to a whiteboard where I had to do some significant planning before even thinking about implementing this. And I heavily recommend that you guys do the same thing. So whatever your game is where you are thinking about adding Go, before just jumping right in and starting to write code and thinking, yeah, I'm just going to knock this out. Um, I tried to do that and I was just making a mess. So. I had to switch back over here to Miro and kind of lay out in a table what I was trying to do. And this is how I decided to structure it. On the left, on the first column, I put my goals. And I only have two, multiply and generate power. Then I establish what's called a reward. And this is really about helping you decide, well, which goal should I pursue? Should I multiply or should I generate power? And you need some sort of mechanism that ideally is changing with your world state uh, to make it interesting, uh, to establish which goal you're going to pursue. Then for each of your goals, you have actions. And these are, are the options that your character is choosing between to determine what his next steps are. 
to accomplish that goal. And only some of those actions actually accomplish the goal. So you have to kind of build a list of actions that can string together in different ways. They can be either simple or have many variations of how they can, can, can connect um, to at least enable a path to achieve the goal. And in the case of multiply, I've got you know six or seven actions here. And next to them is the cost. And that's important because earlier I stated that I'm going to find the most efficient way to accomplish the goal. And the way I do that is by understanding the cost of each of these actions. So you need to know what the cost is per action and whichever one has the least amount of cost, say I need to do get bones, bury bones, you know, get tool plus some skeleton, I'm gonna add all those up. And if that's less than another sequence of events, I'll choose that one. Now, in order to do these things, there needs to be something called preconditions and effects that you're managing. And this is really changes in state. Um, or in the you know the world state or you know it can be a resource quantity it can be whether or not your character has something in inventory um, etc so you need to keep track somehow and we'll show you how in a memory object what your preconditions are and effects and the goal of this is that we're going to eventually establish a list of possible action sequences that will have varying costs that we're going to pick the lowest cost from and we're going to then know okay these are my next four steps to accomplish my goal and i'm going to give that to my character as here's your marching orders please go do this and he's going to then use a simple finite state machine to execute his orders all right so let's jump over to construct three and see what we're working with here the first thing I want you guys to be aware of is we are not gonna walk through this entire game today. Uh, it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Um, it, it, I'm assuming that you guys have already picked up a lot of tips and tricks if you're trying to implement uh, GOAP uh, or any artificial intelligence type of system like this. And um, not that this is like super complex, nobody can figure out, no, you, you, can, you can do it. Um, but there's a lot of tips and tricks that maybe you'll pick up by looking through the code but I'm only going to focus on a specific section, which is related to the implementation of Go. So in how I laid out my event sheet for this demo game, that sits inside of goal setting and action planner, as well as actions. And then we'll briefly come up to our skeleton box here to just show you what the state machine looks like to see how it's working together. So let's jump into here. Actually, before we jump in, let's go back to our Miro board. So in addition to the table above, I was laying out how these decisions can play out and how these actions can be sequenced based off their preconditions and the effects, just kind of starting to map it out. And this is important because you will need to know roughly how many levels deep that you are going to have to do some sort of recursive looping or for, nested for looping uh, to really establish what your action sequence is gonna be. If all of your possible action sequences take it like six or seven or eight steps, you're gonna need six or seven or eight nested for loops. So I don't recommend going that deep. In this tutorial, I've gone four levels deep as my worst case scenario. So you'll see when in my code, I have four, four, four um, loops that are nested. Continuing down here, this is where I've kind of mapped out my pseudo code uh, of what I'm gonna try to do here. And so I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth to make sure that I'm kind of answering these questions that I mapped out before filming this video. So we have lots of characters, it's not just one. So we're gonna be doing a for loop on each of our skeletons uh, since there's gonna be continuing to, to multiply. And the very first thing we have to do is we have to determine the goal. And we already kind of talked about this. We have to understand um, what is the best goal to be doing. And so we're gonna use something I call it here as dynamic weighting. And we're gonna use those uh, reward column equations to determine which one we wanna do, which one's the best score. So if we come back to our game, that's the very first thing I do. You come in here and inside this dictionary, I've called dictionary goals. I'm every loop coming through and I'm saying, all right, what is my multiply reward and what is my generate power reward? reward? So I'm using a dictionary to do this. Let's just show you it. It looks like this. So all I'm doing is I'm populating this each time I go through and whichever one is higher, that's what I'm going to do. Seems simple enough. 
And then I go on. Okay, so I have my goal. Yay, fantastic. Uh, that's like the easiest part of this. Now we need to get all of our, our actions. Well, how are, how are we gonna do that? We're gonna use what I've called here as a generate action plan tree. I'm gonna use a JSON object to do that. Uh, JSON is just a really convenient way to do this because I'm gonna have different, I don't know, for me that just made the most sense for how I was gonna structure the data as I was dynamically writing to it um, and coming up with all my options. So how are we gonna generate it? Well, I talked about this a little bit. I'm gonna have to do some looping here. So I'm gonna loop through dictionaries. So I decided to use dictionaries to store my possible actions related to a goal chosen. So let's pop back over to our code. What does this look like? Well, I've got two goals. I've got multiply and generate power. So multiply, okay, this is simple enough. I've got a table here of seven actions and a value, which is the cost of that action. Let's go over to generate power. All right, I've got four here. And here are their costs uh, to be executed. Okay, simple enough so far. So what I need to do is I somehow need to loop through each of those actions. And I need to determine whether or not that's a viable action. And whether or not I meet the preconditions. And if I do, does it accomplish the goal? Or do I still have some more work to do? So let's look at our code. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here for you guys. All right, so we're coming through. We're saying for each skeleton, this first section here, I'll pause here briefly. All I'm doing is I'm finding the goal with the highest value. So I know which goal to choose. So I go through my dictionary goals. I do a check here, which we'll talk about, which says, as long as it's not on this naughty list that I've called array goal not viable, okay, let's keep going. I can choose the goal that has the highest value. You might find that your goal, unfortunately, doesn't have any possible solution, in which case I'm using an array to populate a list of goals that didn't work for this particular skeleton. And I go to the next best goal. And the next time I come through, the world state will be different. So I'm gonna, I'll have that cleared out and, I'll, and I'll, I'll use it again just as a helper. Okay, so now back to the, the action tree. Um, so now I'm going through and I'm looking and I say, I've got, I've got my goal, but I don't have my action tree yet. So let's just say my goal was multiply. Well, I need to loop through each of the items in that dictionary for multiply. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm going to set a handful of things. I'm going to set some temporary values to help me keep track. My temp key level one, I'm going to set to whatever my current uh, key is. So which, which action am I talking about? And what is the cost, which is just the column over. And I'm going to call a function where I'm going to call the um, set dictionary temp function using my skeleton ID and my parameter level one what is that okay well let's 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 go down to our, our our function and i put that inside of here so inside of set dictionary temp what i'm doing is i'm going through and establishing for each of my skeletons when i initialize my skeletons I assign them a number of helping dictionaries to help us through this process. So because we're gonna be looping through at least four times, I need to keep track of the change in state as I go another level down. So let's just say I'm in the first level and I, and I go and I collect a resource. Well, in that next level or that next action, the world, the code needs to know that I have one less resource or now I have a resource. So maybe that helps me meet the preconditions of a different action on the second go. And then maybe that's the one that lets me actually achieve my goal. So you need to use helper, you know, memory, you know, constructs to do this. I'm using dictionaries to basically maintain um, the state uh, this, uh, of, of my character as it goes through each level. And then as I come back around and I consider and I and I and I and I go all the way back to level one, I clear out 
everything down from downstream from it and I begin again. And I keep going through and find solutions and I maintain my state inside these dictionary temp levels. You will need to kind of look at the code to really see the nuances of this, but that's the basic idea. And I say, okay, if I'm at the very first level, which is what I'm at, I'm gonna say for each key, I'm going to, each key of my current dictionary, I'm gonna load that into my level one. Okay, so that's, that's interesting. So what that means is I'm using this dictionary called current and current is my real state. That's my state as I'm hitting this code. So I'm a skeleton, I have a tool and maybe I have one of my resources and I don't have anything else. Uh, so what does that, what does that kind of look like? Um, let's show you, I guess I don't have that open yet. Oh, that's because I'm creating it on the fly. Uh, but what that looks like is it's just a list of Uh, something like this for dictionary start is what I'm using as an Ajax call in the beginning of the game to set this up. So do I have bones? Do I have a tool? Do I have a herb, uh, gold or gem or berry bones? Those are the things that I'm maintaining. So coming back here, I'm going to set my first level to my current state. And then the second level, if, if it's the second level, which I'll call at the next year, it's going to set it to my my level one. And then at level three, I'm going to set it to level two. And at level four, I'm going to set it to level three. And this lets me pass this off and remember state or change state as I'm cons considering possible solutions. Did I lose you yet? <laughs> uh, it's a little complicated, but um, when you go through it, you will, I think, get the gist of it. So let's go back up to our for loop. All right, so I call this temp result. And you'll notice that when I call this, the result of, of this is I've set this, so that's good, great. And then I come back and then I set temp result level one to another function and I'm calling a mapped function and I'll briefly show you this, but I'm going to call uh, inside of my actions. I'm going to call my uh, my first, or I'm going to call my current key. So remember, I've got all these different possible actions. So I'm going to call a function that I've called get bones or bury bones. And what that's going to do is it's going to determine whether or not that action has met the preconditions and whether or not I haven't if I haven't, I'm going to say stop. Don't go any further. I can't do anything. If it meets the conditions, I'm going to say great. Did I accomplish my goal? If yes, I've achieved my goal. If no, it's going to say keep going. So let's go into my actions. So I've got something here called get bones. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, um, in this, I need to have at least one bone. And I need to make sure that uh, my player doesn't already have bones. Otherwise, this is silly. I'm not going to get bones twice. Um, and if it meets these, then I'm going to, what does that do to my state? Okay. Well, now I have bones. Great. And I'm going to say continue because I didn't accomplish my goal or, you know what? I already had bones or maybe there was no bones in the map. So stop. I'm done. All right. So that's what, that was what it returned. So then I can say, all right, well, what were my results here? I can have continue or stop or achieved, right? And if it's achieved, great, I've found my solution. Now I can be the first thing that I populate into my JSON action plan tree. And I'm using a JSON object to do this. And inside of here, I'm gonna store the sequence of actions that led to me achieving that result. And I'm also going to take the time to sum the costs of those actions and put it there in that JSON object. So that that way I know at the end what my um, my total options are and what their total costs are. And I can choose my lowest cost. So I'm, I'm choosing the most efficient option to achieve the goal. If I was to continue, because say I didn't achieve the goal, I'd go down to the next level. And then this just repeats itself. And then if I continue, I go down to the next level until I achieve the goal or I don't. And in which case it goes back up 
And it basically you're going to execute and crunch through these nested for loops. And this is where the magic kind of occurs to build this JSON uh, action tree. If you've accomplished this, the rest is kind of easy. So to do this, you need to use some dictionaries. You need to use some nested for loops and you need to store the successful values um, in a JSON JSON object or some memory construct that tells you what's my sequence of actions and their costs. And I used helper functions that were for each of the actions to keep track of my preconditions and my effects for each action. So if I want to add a new action, it's really easy. I just make another another function that I call, I don't know, um, chop tree, whatever it may be. And I say, oh, is there a tree available? Oh, do I have a tool? Okay, yeah, I do. Let's go do it. Uh, did it accomplish my goal? Maybe. Uh, if it did, great. Publish it. Otherwise, continue. If I didn't meet the conditions, stop. And I can keep adding these actions quickly. And it's that's the beauty of using this type of system. So that's kind of important. I probably lost a lot of people going through that, but this is something that I highly recommend you guys diving in. You're gonna learn a ton trying to implement something like this and your skills will grow a ton as a developer um, becoming comfortable trying to implement these type of systems. Uh, I'm sure that you can do this in a more efficient way, but this is how I implemented it, and I wanted to share that with you guys. And I think that hopefully a lot of people can benefit from seeing how this was done. Now, let's go back to our whiteboard. Let's kind of remember where we're at because we still kind of got some ways to go. So we talked about how we need to loop through our our levels, and I showed you that. And I talked about okay for each action, I'm going to call the function for that action chop tree or get bones. Did I meet it? Did I meet the preconditions? Great. Uh, what what happened as a result of that? Great. And this is a big, wait a minute. When I go to the next four loops, slash level, slash tier, won't the conditions now be different because of this? Well, we talked about that. The answer is yes. And that's why you need to use those temporary dictionaries at each level that we've assigned to each skeleton. And then if you actually manage to get to a success, fantastic. Log it to the action plan tree. And then when you are done looping, hopefully you have a list of options or at least one. If you have zero, then you need to add it to that naughty list we talked about or the not viable list and go back up and decide, okay, what's the next best goal? And then start going through. And hopefully you design your uh, Go AI system so that you have at least one action that doesn't really need any preconditions. So there's no real lock or uh, way that you can't complete something. All right, so congratulations. We've created our action plan tree. It looks like a nice JSON object. In fact, let me at least play this and uh, see what this looks like. And what I'm going to do is, I, I think I'm, at least I hope I am, I'm logging it to the console. So I'm going to hit F12 here and see what that looks like just to visualize it. All right, so my player started. Fantastic. Great. Okay, so action plan. In the beginning of the game, apparently, there's only, you know, this was his action that he decided. I don't know if I'm logging the whole action tree or just the action he was assigned, but this is kind of what it looks like. I formatted a JSON object that says, okay. I've got an action plan, um, and this is my plan. I'm going to get the tool. I'm going to gather the herb. I'm going to sell the herb. Oh, okay. I got a new action plan. He already completed it. So this one has five possible options. Which one's the best? I got a cost of eight, 14, 10, 10, six. I'm going to do six, which was hunt boar, and that's what he's doing. Great. We just saw it in action. Okay, let's close this. Let's go back to here. Okay, so which path do I choose? We already talked about that. You're gonna choose the one that's the most efficient. And all right, I've got my sequence of actions. That's fantastic. Uh, out of all the different things that could be going on in my world, I've architected something that results in me always choosing the most efficient sequence of actions to accomplish a goal. And it can be multiple goals. That's the beauty of, of Go. Um, but now we have to do something to actually progress our character through those actions. Remember, these were all kind of hypotheticals and what the most efficient thing is going to be. 
um, you still need to use a state machine to progress through this. It's going to be a simple state machine relatively, but you still need to do one. So how are we going to do it? We're going to use a simple state machine. How simple? <laughs> All right, let me zoom out a little bit. This is getting a little obnoxious. All right, so we're going to use really a few things. Um, idle. If you are idle and you have an action plan, okay, you've gone through all this, we're going to do the next thing in that plan. Chop a tree, whatever. Um, now, in order to do that, you're most likely going to have to walk to something. Uh, so really, the most common thing is you're going to say, okay, well, find the path to the nearest resource or whatever the thing is you have to walk to. And then you're going to do your thing, your action when you get there. And when you do your thing, I at least use an animation label to that thing, get bones, chop tree, whatever. And when the animation finishes is when I'm going to trigger that I've accomplished that task. And when you accomplish that action, sorry, I should be using the word action. That's when you're going to say, I'm going to pop the action off of the action array that I've a pub that I published my sequence of actions to. And pops the word, I mean, that's what you actually use in construct or, I mean, it's a common word pop. You're going to take uh, it off of the front of the array and then it's going to say, okay, well, what's my next thing I'm going to do? And then it's going to kind of loop back through and it's going to say, all right, um, I need to uh, go to this resource now or I've completed my task. Now, if you've accomplished your goal, say you've, you got to the final task, you completed it and now there's no more actions, that should trigger to go all the way back and to find a new goal. And that is, at a high level, GOP AI. Uh, let's come back here and at least see how we implemented some of those last steps in code. So we did this big old for loop. There's like four nested for loops, right? And we got a list of, um, here we go, log in console, JSON action plan tree to beautified string. That's what we were just looking at in the console. So now we have it. We have the goal. We have our action tree. Well, you need to find the most efficient. This is just some brute force way of doing that. I won't really dive in, but suffice it to say, I publish the most efficient into an array action plan that's specific to my character that I'm automating. I push back JSON action plan tree dot current value on the x-axis. Now I've set my action to true. So it has action to true. And now my character has an array with my actions to go do. And that's the end of that section. So to see it close the loop versus our pseudo code, we do need to briefly look at our state machine. So let's go up to that. So our skeleton um, is utilizing a simple state machine where it says if I'm idle and I have an action and I'm not currently looking for a path, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at what's my current action inside of my array. If it's get bones, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find the nearest bone pile to my character, and then I'm gonna find the path to it. Fantastic. I'm doing some things that, I'm using something called claimed so that my, my skeletons aren't all fighting for the same resources. Uh, my resources are utilizing a Boolean that says, hey, somebody already claimed me. If so, pick something else. Um, and that's why it's pick nearest and not claimed. And I also have something here that if for whatever reason, something has changed in my world where I've removed the bone piles, even though when I did my statement, my GOP AI loop, uh, it was there. Maybe somehow it got eliminated in this step of the sequence. I have a catch here that basically says, if this isn't available anymore, loop through all the rest of the actions and just pop them off because we're going to go all the way back to the beginning and find a new goal. And that's what this does. So let's just say we found our bone pile. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to say when we find the path, we're going to move along the path. We're going to go to our bone pile. And when we've um, arrived to the bone pile, we're going to do our action. We're going to get the bones. All right, and the way we do that is we set the state to get bones. And the reason I do it this way is that I, I always have inside my state machines um, this animation block here that says for each skeleton, set animation to skeleton.state. 
So I always marry my animation names to my states. So as soon as I say Get Bones, there is a animation titled um, Get Bones inside of my character, which if I go to real quickly, you can see there is a Get Bones. Coming down here, coming back. Well, now when my Get Bones animation is finished, uh, what is it gonna do? Well, it's gonna do a few things. Uh, it's going to update my current dictionary because my state has now changed. I now have bones, fantastic. I'm gonna pop that action off the list so I go to the next one and I'm gonna set my state back to idle and that triggers me to go through that same state machine again. And it's just gonna go through and through. And what's nice about how uh, Goat AI is implemented is that it's really easy to continue to add actions. Really what that requires you to do is inside that action section, you have to put in your preconditions and what state it, the possible state changes and you have to add it to your dictionary here. And then inside of your state machine, you need to put um, a couple of blocks related to it. And they continue to just work and it will continue to optimize itself based off of whatever the least efficient action is for the world state. So rather than having a really complicated finite state machine where this would be really complicated to manage, this becomes something I can continue to build on, which is why it's nice. Now, I will say this was a royal pain for me to figure out the first time. And if I did it again, which I'm sure I will at some point, it'll be a lot easier now that I figured out how to do it. But I would stick with finite state machines for simpler actions. If you need this, um, you know, it's impactful. And if you find yourself having really messy state machines, this is something to consider. So with that said, Let's go back to our, our skeleton horde game and let it play out a little bit longer and have some fun with it. So it paused in the background because it, it realized I wasn't on the tab. So we're, we're up to seven skeletons here. Let's, let's let it get up to like, I don't know, 15 or so. And we're going to swarm our, uh, our boss and we're going to have fun letting our, our skeleton horde take out the, the bad guy here. So let's go ahead and summon him. This guy's got, um, a little bit of uh, code on him that uh, he's kind of whiffing right now, even though he's close. I didn't do a great job uh, writing that code, apparently. There we go. Now he's hitting him. Um, he's got a little collision block on his weapon. And if he makes contacts with the skeletons, then it does some damage. Otherwise, it's really waiting for this attack button. And in which case, then my characters are going to swarm the guy and take him down. So these guys are all going to go multiply. Once they've multiplied, I'll hit this attack button. We'll see how many levels of bosses we can we can take out. So we're up to 17, 19, 20. Oh, that's good enough. Okay, that's, that's attack. Get them. <laughs> all right, that was pretty easy. Let's get level two. All right, attack. Round two. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Round three, Let's see if we can take him out. We've got 18 skeletons left. It's still horde-like, but becoming less less horde-like. Hordy, horde-like, horde-like. All right, let's take this guy out. Level four, we've got 14 skeletons. <laughs> All right, we've got eight. And final charge. Oh no, retreat. I spent way too much time just deciding that I needed to have a retreat function when I should have just let the game be done. <laughs> I think this is probably going to be our demise. Yep, the bad guy won here. Our skeletons were not victorious on the level 5 boss, but I have let this thing get up to like over 100 skeletons, and it's pretty awesome. You can do, I don't know, 12, level 12 or 13 boss for how I've coded him getting stronger. Um, I had a lot of fun making this, guys. Uh, really, really encourage you to dive in and think about how you can implement GOPE in one of your games or just in a demo game to learn how it works. Uh, take a look at the file that I post in the description. You'll be able to go to itch and download this for Construct 3. I will have the art removed because I don't have uh, the license to share the art. Um, but definitely feel free to use it in your games however you want. License CC0 on anything in there and hopefully you're able to learn from it so with that if you did like this video please subscribe it makes my day whenever i see somebody scribe and i i only have like 30 some subscribers at the time of this video and 
Uh, each and every single one of those made me smile when they did. So thank you and have a nice day, everybody. Thank you so much.